You taking that one too? Bye-bye, toy. Hope to see ya. Okay. <laughs>Okay, you guys, so in today's video, we're just gonna make some simple, easy, crinkle toys for the ferrets and for my cats, actually, because they need some new toys and I don't wanna spend a lot of money and I don't need to because I know the things that make them happy. They love anything that crinkles, and anything they can carry around and hide. So, what I did was I got a, a quick template offline of a heart. You can just Google a heart shape outline PDF and print it off and make it as big or as small as you want and cut out some fabric. These are right sides together in whatever shapes that you want. Just remember if you get something really complicated it's going to be kind of hard to stitch so the cool part about these is you do not need a sewing machine. You could absolutely stitch this by hand in probably less than 15 minutes. So that is the other cool thing. No sewing machine required at all. These are simply just squares. Now you have a couple of options. If you're gonna make these for ferrets, I would not recommend putting any kind of anything in. I'm gonna put crinkle paper inside, but if your ferret chews or eats fabric, you may not wanna put anything inside. You could put some stuffing in there, but don't leave them unattended with it. Um, but for me, my ferrets don't chew and they love crinkle toys. And so I have crinkle paper. I have lots of it because I make crinkle tunnels for my Etsy shop. And I always end up with these miscellaneous tiny pieces I can't use, which are perfect for this and for these. So crinkle paper you can buy on Amazon. It kind of looks, you can get it like this. You can also get it um, on Etsy from a seller. And I'll put the link in the description. And it's this. So it's about $7 um, or $8 and you get a whole, whole lot of it. So, or you could use um, a cereal bag, which doesn't crinkle quite as much. And also those bags that are clear plastic that you can buy, you get like candy and cookies in at like a bake sale. Those are really crinkly too and may work for this. Um, but if you're gonna make it for your cat, like I'm gonna make one for my cat, you could stuff it with catnip. You could put um, crinkle paper and a bell in it it's completely up to you. So for my cats, I'm going to put, um, I can't find my catnip. It's missing. I have a jar of it that I use when I, I make these for them probably once or twice a week because it keeps them occupied. But, um, so we're just going to do some simple, easy DIY, just a quick toy for your ferrets or your cats or even your dogs. If they like it, my dogs love toys that have no stuffing. They like to rip all the stuffing out and carry the babies around with no stuffing. So, once you've cut your shapes out, what you're going to want to do is get a piece of your crinkle paper and you're going to cut the same shape as your fabric, but you're going to cut it a little bit bigger. You want it to be about a half inch bigger on all the sides. Um, that's kind of how crinkle paper works. And then I will show you what to do once we cut out those papers. So let me do that now. Okay, so you have your shape, which for me is this heart. And then I have my crinkle paper, which is bigger than the heart. And what you're gonna wanna do is you wanna clip it to the, you wanna clip it in place, or I guess if you were using pins, you could do that. And then you kinda wanna, with your extra, because you made it too big, you kinda wanna create a bubble in the center. Um, basically, the way that the crinkle paper works is you don't want it to be tight or pulled taut against your fabric. You want there to be a bubble. That's the way that it crinkles. If the paper is the exact same size as your fabric, you'll create, it'll be too tight and you won't get that same crinkly effect that you do. And so they recommend that you leave the crinkle paper a little bit bigger and that ultimately you end up with it kind of having a bubble in the center. So let me grab some more clips so I can give you guys a quick show of how this looks. And this would be the same way that you would make a tunnel. If you guys have ever watched my tunnel tutorial, tutorial, you would do your crinkle paper the same way. Now, if you look at this, there's like a bubble in the center. This is not flat. And that's exactly what you want it to look like. And you want that to be the case for um, basically anything, anytime you're using crinkle paper, you don't want it to be flush because then you won't get the good crinkle sound. And that, I mean, now some ferrets don't like crinkles. So if your pet doesn't like crinkle, you, this may not be a great project for you. You might want to use stuffing. You can use poly stuffing. Just make sure that you sew it real tight. 
um, and that they can't rip it or break it open. So now that you've gotten your crinkle paper put on, what you're gonna wanna do is take your items over to the sewing machine and you're gonna wanna stitch a quarter inch to a half inch seam all the way around, but you're gonna wanna leave about a two inch opening. So on your, say you're using a heart, you're gonna wanna leave an opening from about here to here. So you're gonna leave this, this space right here open because you're gonna have to flip this inside out when you're done. And you're gonna wanna use at least a quarter inch seam, maybe even a half inch depending on the size of your item because when you flip it back in, you're gonna have to hand stitch it closed or I guess you could stitch it with the machine. It's up to you, but it'll look prettier if you hand stitch it depending on um, kind of how you made it. So if there's a big enough seam, I may stitch this closed with the machine and I'll show you if I do it that way. But if not, we're gonna blind stitch it closed. So, but first let's go sew a hole, sew it up and leave a little hole to flip it inside out. And then we'll come back. Okay, so now that you've stitched all these, you should have something that looks like this. It should be kind of bubbly in the center and you should have this extra. And what you're gonna do is, you can cut off your excess fabric, but you probably don't need to. So just turn, actually you do want to at like the point, but don't cut it too much because I don't want your stuff to be too thin. Okay, so let's flip this bad boy inside out. Or right side out, I'm sorry. And you're going to want to take your finger and gently pull the, uh, you know, push out your corners and your heart shape. And I show something that looks like this. And you see this spot here. So this is your seam that you left open. You're just going to roll, let it naturally roll in on itself like this. And then you're going to take a pin or a clip, whichever you would like, and just clip it closed for now. Um, and you're going to do this to all of whatever, however many you made. So you should have it, it should look like this when you're done. All right, so you have a couple ways. You can either go to your machine and stitch all the way around this, and that's fine. But obviously you're going to see your stitch line, and that's okay. Um, it's up to you if you want that or not. If you don't and you want to hide your seams and your stitches, then you're gonna to wanna to do what's called the blind stitch. I have a tutorial on this on my um, channel and I will link to it. But I will try to quickly show you um, kinda of how the blind stitch works. So you see this big giant opening here. So what I have is I have a piece of thread and I'm gonna tie a knot in the, in the back of it, in the, on the end of it. All right. And how this basically works, and I will put a link to my other tutorial that's a little more clear, is you're going to take your thread and you're going to go into this opening here, right up again, right inside, you're going to come right out at this right here. All right, and then just tuck this thread in there. All right. Now, what you do is you take your needle and you go inside this first layer right here but you don't go through the other side you just go through the top layer and then what you're going to do is you want to go right across so you want to go right here you want to make sure that you go do the same thing and come out directly across from this stitch you just came out at so go over here and come go into the top layer of fabric and come out directly across from the stitch you just just did so it should look like this and we are going to do that again this is called a blind stitch or a ladder stitch the ladder comes from the fact that you're creating what looks like ladder rungs repeat these steps until you reach the end of the opening and then gently pull your thread until the opening closes and you can no longer see your stitches. Tie a knot and then you're finished. Okay, so this I'm gonna give to my carrots, my cat, and what I'm gonna do is I'm adding a bell. So I'm just gonna stick a bell inside of there. Um, you can also put some catnip in there. And what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna give this to my ferrets, although you can give your ferrets stuff like this as long as you're watching them. I, I mean, I don't think your ferret could even swallow that, but you just never know. Um, and I, to me, it's just not worth the risk of leaving them alone. Now, I do give them things like this to play with as long as I'm sitting right there. But um, aside from that, I don't. 
I am going to top stitch this closed with the machine. And um, I'm going to give this one to my ferrets. I'm not putting anything else in there, just the crinkle paper. And I am going to top stitch this just to show you guys kind of what it looks like. So I'm going to go to the machine and just top stitch all the way around. You want to make sure that you catch your seams, that you close this hole. Okay, so I just top stitched this and I just used a decorative stitch. Um, this is obviously not something that I would sell because it just isn't very professional. I would sell these. Um, as long as the stitching was hidden, I would sell these. So anyway, that's that. And this is this, just some simple, easy, quick toys to keep your ferrets or cats entertained. The other one, I'm going to put some um, catnip in. So it's just like little five minute crafts that are fun and just quick, easy, inexpensive toys for your ferrets or small pets or cats. What is it? What is this? What is this? Come on, Mama making this for you. Come on, Mama making this for you. What is it? Get it. Take it. Take it away. Get it, but good boy. That my good boy. Where are you going with it? You hiding it? Oh my goodness, you took it away. You put it in your spot? Okay. You taking that one too? Bye-bye, toy. Oh, see ya. Okay. There we go.